So we're taking a look today at Screen Connect. We have been using Screen Connect for a few years. They were purchased by ConnectWise, which made me worried, maybe when they purchased them a year ago, that the product may or may not be as good. I'm always worried when any company gets bought because uh, some changes, but so far the product quality, the updates have kept coming and everything's been going really well. They did change their licensing around, but they give you a lot more. They changed the, the entry fee for it to be a little higher but you get a lot more for that and a lot more sessions um, on the self-hosted version, which is what we're using here. So we're using on-premise self-hosted. Uh, we have two-factor authentication turned on. We're using the Google Authenticator method, which is a time-based authentication. Works really well, easy uh, to do. You don't have to worry about any uh, internet connection issues or SMS security breaches, uh, and it keeps all of it secure. You know, we figure we have a ton of unattended sessions with a lot of clients. Uh, Security is really always at the forefront for us, so the two-factor is really important. Highly recommend turning it on. You can do intelligent launching on this, so it will pick whenever you launch this, whichever session you are in for Mac, for Linux, for Windows, which is really cool. Uh, it also realizes what browser you're in. This works both on the client and the server side, so whatever your client, if they're connecting with Linux box, automatically goes, okay, I'm going to give you the Linux version for the version of Linux you're using, because uh, there's a couple different uh, options the way it launches. If you're running a Mac, no problem. You connect to our site, it recognizes that, and it's gonna send you the Mac version. Uh, multiple session allows multiple technicians to connect simultaneously. Uh, you can remotely upgrade all your unattended clients, and you can remotely relabel all the unattended clients. So once you've installed an unattended client, you can still customize them, move them around, recategorize them. And there's a lot of filtering that goes on in the interface uh, to help you find stuff. So it's not just a big pile of machines we've set up. We have everything tagged with a customer ID number, so we can actually search for the customer ID and filter directly to the session we're looking for. And we have it embedded into our website. It runs really light. Here's the Screen Connect server running on our Linux box uh, using Mono. It's uh, Mono and the services is 1.38 gigs running. And then they have their own SSL system if you want to use it, but it's only in Windows that you can install the SSL certain and copy the config file back over to a Linux. It's a confusing way to do it, so we keep it simple. We proxy it through Apache with our own SSL certificate to make it really easy. Now, if you're not using SSL, it's still fine, but when you don't use SSL, if you're technicians are uh, going in remotely, you are going to be passing stuff through the clear. The sessions themselves, once they're connected outside the web interface, have their own encryption layer to keep it safe. Uh, we're running this right now on a AMD Phenon virtualized and only two gigs of RAM assigned to this virtual machine. It, Screen Connect runs on a dedicated machine running Debian 7 here. It's really lightweight. It does not take a lot of horsepower or processing power at all to run this. Um, and the updates, which we updated it recently, don't require reboot. Uh, power outage was our last reboot. So it's a very stable system. The updates have gone really, really smooth. I can only speak for the Linux version because that's what we're using, uh, but we really haven't had any problems and it's been in place upgrades for quite a while. This is June 2016, so it's version 5.6 is the latest version. They have a link that lets you download. And we take a look at the interface itself. We're gonna filter out some of the client information here uh, so you don't get to see it. Oh, real quick, the extensions we are running, just so you know, if you're running Screen Connect and you go, hey, Tom, mine looks a little different. Uh, we're using the additional general info, auto respond, command toolbox, expand thumbnail. This is really handy so you can uh, preview something before connecting. Uh, the full build installer, guest session starter, guest starter exe. This we leave on desktops of computers we sell so that way they can just double click it and instantly get connected to us without going to the website. List published sessions, remote system diagnostics. This is basically a PowerShell extension that lets you run some PowerShell commands on the Windows box to dump information back over uh, right inside of Screen Connect. And I'll show you how that works. So you can filter at the top and type in the name of any computer that you want to find. So I typed in demo at the top and I've got this screen like demo option running. Now, first thing you can notice is the tells me when the guest was updated. I can force an update to see what's on the screen now. Hit update guest demo, tells you zero minutes. You can expand it and see what's on the screen closer. Now, there is adjustments. I don't have it turned up too high, but you can adjust the resolution and say, okay, I want a higher resolution poll. But you gotta remember the higher resolution, you have these thumbnails pulled because they pull every so often from all of your installed, unattended and uh, attended installs 
So it's going to start sucking up bandwidth and taking up memory to have all these little thumbnails. So we keep it a little bit higher than stock, but we didn't go too high on it because I don't really want to consume that. It's just nice to see what's on the screen or just when you're watching a copy of files. If you want to know if the files are done copying, I can just hit update guest info without actually having to connect to the machine. Now, here's some of the plugins that we have. So you can see the services running. You can see the recent things in event log which this is a new clean install, there's really not much in here. You can see which software is installed. And then you can actually find out the identifier for each piece of software installed. And I'll show you why that's handy is because you can go here to the command toolbox and paste in the ID and it would actually let you paste in uh, the ex executable ID so you can uninstall something without logging in. And if you know the process ID, you can kill a task without logging in. So you can go look for a process that's running, look for the ID of that process, and literally just kill it, which is really handy. Uh, you've got a note section, so you can add notes to this particular machine. You have a command section where you can execute command line PowerShell commands and see what the results are. You can have messages that go back and forth between the client here without actually connecting. And back in the general, it's gonna give you the logged on username and the name of the PC, how long it's been there, uh, machine, work group, Windows 7 Professional, gives you the build number, does this for all the versions of Windows. It sees that I've got four virtual processors assigned because this is also running in our virtual stack, how much memory is assigned to it, internal IP address. And it gives you, this says default system BIOS, but it will give you the BIOS names. So for example, it's a Dell and it'll give you the BIOS serial number. And with the Dells, for example, it gives you the BIOS revision number. It does that on a few different models. Uh, nice handy information. So before we've ever actually done anything more than have the client connect or it's one of our antenna installs, for example, it's already pulled all this information on here. We can also edit to change the name. I've called it, it's guest client screen demo. Uh, I can change it around. I can pass it over to another technician because right now it's not assigned to a tech, but then you can pass it to a technician. This has fine green controls for permissions, so you can assign techs that they can only see their own systems that you've assigned them, so you can delegate all this out uh, however you want. We don't really get as much that. We have all the techs can see all the sessions. That way, if a tech starts it and another tech wants to finish it, we don't have to make sure he didn't he transferred it over. We have the text that can see their sessions, but that's what this is over here is it's got an option to see all sessions, your sessions. So it does have it as a filtering option, which is really handy for being able to figure out which things you're working on, as, especially as you get a whole lot of installs going, it, it makes a big difference. One of the other nice features you can do on here is not just run standard commands like I show, but you can actually pull up the toolbox from here and run a tool without being connected. So if I were to click this, it will actually start and run on the guest machine automatically. So if you copy executables into the shared toolbox, which means it's on the server and you put these files on the server, you can actually kick off and run commands, batch files, anything that you have in the command toolbox right to the client. Now you can do this when you're connected to the client, but the nice thing with Screen Connect is we can write a script maybe custom for a customer and have to connect to 20 of their computers. And then we can go kick that script off on every one of their computers by just not even connecting, just going through the web interface and hitting the toolbox and saying, go run this script. It automatically executes it which with whatever permissions that Screen Connect has. So that's come up before that where can you see UAC? You can see whatever the permissions that Screen Connect was launched with. In the case of a build install unattended, as a service that was installed as admin, but the user's only installed as guest, you still get admin privileges. But if the user has very limited privileges and they're the ones that install Screen Connect, you, don't, you can't gain any more privileges than they have. That's the nature of any of the remote support software. You don't get any more privileges than the user that installed it. So most of the time you wanna make sure this is being installed as an admin or making sure that they were UAC prompted when they loaded it, that way it has full admin privileges. So now here we're connected to the guest. And this is what I kicked off was Windows Stat to look at the size of the hard drive. And like I said, I kicked that off. It's pretty simple. Um, you can run it from there. You can run the toolbox here. And for example, if we have GWX in era stop Windows 10. If I just kick it off and run it, it copies it over, automatically executes, and I can say yes and install GWX control panel. 
it's handy to have all these on here and they're really easy to manage. If I want to add a file on this new directory, you can create directories, folders, upload a file. We do this when we do deployments at clients uh, for our MSP. We'll take and build a build installer for that specific client and then we just execute the file one by one on each of their computers as long as they're connected. It makes deployments go really fast remotely because you put the file in there. Then when you're done with that specific client, you can take it out of there so it doesn't accidentally get installed somewhere else. It's just they make it really easy to manage. Uh, same with this. If TDS killer gets outdated, we just delete it and upload a new one. Uh, malware bytes because we're using Ninite so it never gets on there but if we wanted to update Chrome we could just take it and run Chrome from there right from the toolbox and just kick it off uh, really handy when you know we call someone's got a browser that's corrupted we can just go through uninstall it remotely kick off the Ninite installer next and yes a couple times done in a few seconds you didn't have to go to a website to download I didn't have to copy any files on there throwing your Ninite installers right in the toolbox really handy uh, you get some general information in the information box. The Help Center allows you to Google right within here for messages. Uh, it also supports OCR. So what you do is you would actually go here, enable it, and grab the screen. If you have an OK box that comes up with a lot of numbers in there, and you're going, I need those numbers. I don't want to type them. One, it's nice you can type them because you have it right here. But with this, it lets you OCR it. And when it OCRs, it Go, pulls through the text and drops it right into a Google search for you so you can look up error codes. Uh, pretty handy. This shows you which technicians are connected. Uh, you can hide it. So it'll say Tom, it'll put all the uh, connections on there and it'll show you other technicians there. Uh, this is great for training. We do this where connections, technicians get connected and they go, hey, I need some help with this. One more tech can jump on there, uh, solve the problem, then they can, can carry on with it. Uh, it has VoIP built in where you can turn microphones on. And with so many people having laptops, this is really handy. They call in we'll talk to them for a second once they're connected we can hit the VoIP and turn it on and talk back and forth to the client through their microphone and speakers the default is always off on this silent on both sides which is great so you don't have to worry about them accidentally hearing you screenshots to clipboard to file as in record video and choose what folder that goes into so you can record your screen connect sessions themselves uh, file transfers you can send file receive file like any of the others it's pretty straightforward send a folder receive a folder and it creates a screen connect folder on theirs. Miscellaneous stuff, um, you can force a credentials login change. Just hit this reboot to safe mode, normal mode. Now you can suspend your own input. We a lot of times have to block the guest input because they want to play tug of war with the mouse. Now they also have a blink monitor feature and I've not really dug into this, but there's a way you can blink the monitor and put a custom uh, logo up and say, you know, we're working your computer. I never really find much of a reason to block them watching me work. I just don't want to play tug of war with the mouse with them. Uh, the annotation is kind of cool. You can let them draw and be like, you need to click here and put little arrows to things. And this is our uh, help tool that's that we have. This is that build install, not build install, but the antenna install we put on our desktop where they can just put their name in and join and then it builds a session right on the fly. Uh, it's a really handy utility I and mean, we've been really happy with Screen Connect. The monitor option, uh, it's only one single monitor for this demo, but one that does is a feature, well, first you got scaling options here, so 200%, 75%, but if they have multiple monitors, you can share them amongst your monitors and actually match it. So I have triple monitors and I can uh, stretch it across my monitors, or you can break each one out into its own session, which is pretty cool. So when you're, uh, a lot of the transportation clients we have have dual and triple monitors on their screen, and we can grab both screens at once and have them in individual screens connect so we can easily drag between them it's not a problem uh, resolution changes all that no issues at all and the chat is good pops up it's got a little thing on there to change focus uh, we have a tool installed so if they leave the chat open but aren't connected one of the plugins allows them to it, it automatically responds to them say we're not connected right now but you're trying to chat with us we'll get back with you shortly that way they aren't expecting that immediate response because sometimes even though it shows them we're connected and it shows them we're not connected if that if they were doing a chat session we asked them a question and we have to disconnect later um it's nice to have that instant notification to a client that we're no longer connected then that way they realize okay i guess i am, shouldn't be waiting for an instant response uh, it also logs everything this goes into a sql database so for audit logs login logs chat logs note logs all that's in there and as it says tom here and it's got tom on the other side um you can go through and 
see the guest that and each technician it'll put their name in there so you tie the tech login on then you can track which technicians what they said who said what uh, really nice because we try to not use the VoIP as much unless there's really something I need to tell the person it's really handy to just have a chat log because then we can say look we told you this and we told you that or we told you this at this time and I'll show you real quick what it looks like in Linux so this is the screen connect for Windows, which probably most of you are using, but if you want, you can use Linux as a client too. Oh, and if it's not build install, it wants to know, do you want to end the session when you close it or leave the session open? We're gonna leave it open because we're gonna do another connect, but it doesn't prompt you this if you do an unattended build install, it just stays uh, stays open all the time. So the Linux client runs using the Ice-T plugin and looks a little different. It's not quite, not quite as polished as the version is for windows but it works just as well i don't have any problems with it you still have the toolbox feature but you can't edit the toolbox from here they didn't add that you have send file receive file a little bit simpler of an interface but all the microphone everything else works uh, monitors it does let you select the monitors but it doesn't split them it just merges them all together in one for the monitor so the linux client's a little bit less uh awesome but it does work really well and the android client works really well so let's show you the android client real quick so you get an idea how that works so here's a look at the android app it's uh pretty neat with the android app you can go through here and do some of the functions like the toolbox uh, so if you wanted to run something like tds killer anything that's in the shared toolbox on the server can be pushed over and executed and then we're actually running this on that so we have the mouse and then it floats around here as you move your finger over it you can say yes no middle click right click so it definitely pretty neat so i'm gonna go ahead and load the update on this and then choose this let's see you're doing this with your finger on an android app sorry for the low res but it's pretty cool you can go through and control it and do this from an app and we'll right click and close that it's a little bit tricky to do but it, it's functional it you can use this i've done this in a pinch a couple times for clients you know i need something done it's on my phone now the nice thing is on the phone app it's still same thing two-factor authentication which makes a little bit pain because you have to switch back between the google app and the android app going okay i got to get my two-factor number and get in there but you do have on-screen keyboard you have a lot of the other functions reboot reconnect uh select sound mode manage your credentials uh, you have a chat up so you can chat with the clients and it slides over for each of these and does that. See, I remember we're doing this on a phone even though you're seeing it here. Uh, this is the phone in uh, landscape mode. So pretty cool. It's nice that it has a functional app on there and it does list all your clients. It lists, the interface is essentially the same. They web wrap their web interface into the Android. That's so essentially a web view for connecting. And it's got a, you touch the session you want, you type join. Um, all the filtering still works. All the menu options on the side still work. And you can still search uh, in the search box. They have an Omni search box where you can type in and find the session you're looking for. So definitely pretty cool. Um, overall, we're really happy with Screen Connect. Like I said, I've been using them for a few years. Uh, my overall feelings on a product that it's up uh, solid. Now we're going to continue to use them uh, for our support until someone compels us that there's something better out there. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, leave some comments below or send me an email and uh, convince me I should be using something else. Thank you.